It should be pretty obvious a sound engineer isn't gonna use this for his profession, but at the same time, it's a great way to introduce a little more life into the hobby. This is the Neo Hippo ET30, and today I wanna to show you three simple use cases. One that'll possibly change how you listen to music today, or at least give you some new options within your space. I feel like I've listened to a few reviews on similar products, and this use case never seems to come up. I'm saving that one closer to the end, so please stick around. The Neo Hippo is a two in, two out VU meter and speaker or amp selector. It lists for $159.99, has really nice looking large VU meters, all the colors you might ask for, 34 different colors, and it's actually uniformly lit. It has a case made out of solid steel, a surprisingly heavy build, and that's really just the 10 foot view, just to highlight this one. Now let's cover the exterior before jumping into some of the use cases. Going over the exterior first, let's take a look at these VU meters. They're actually very well lit from RGB LEDs. You can cycle through the colors with this center control here, or use the included remote to adjust the color or change between the dimming settings. And there are five dimming options that are available. Controlling the VUs and dialing them into what you're looking for as far as movement is really simple. Use the bottom left knob to adjust the range and the right knob to adjust how fast they react. It's a personal preference, so just find what looks best to you and your typical listening volumes. This isn't exactly science here. In this use case, these are not exactly for measuring anything, just providing an analog experience that many crave. We have two buttons at the top below the red LEDs, and this is where you make your selections on which amp or speakers you wanna use, as well as a mic option for those who simply want the VU meters, but don't wanna be bothered actually wiring this into their system for the switching capabilities. The mic does lose a little accuracy, but to be honest, the VU function isn't really for precision. It's nostalgia and it's executing it pretty well in this case. I for one have use cases beyond the meters, the meters are more of an add-on for myself. I like them and think they did a really good job, but the actual switching function is more important for my use cases. Flipping it around, we have nice full-size binding posts. I was really expecting to see the tiny ones that we get on some of the little class D amps, but these are actually pretty decent. Everything is cleanly labeled, speaker sets one and two, as well as amps one and two. On the far right, we simply have the mic as well as the five volt input. The cable is included, but you need to supply the power supply, any wall wart, PC, USB, anything like that'll do the trick. Getting into use case number one. You're the guy or gal who likes to tinker and just can't settle down to one pair of speakers or a single amp. With this, you can go as simple as one amp, two pairs of speakers, or as complicated as two amps and two sets of speakers, which actually works out well for myself when I'm switching back and forth between devices during testing. I have another switch right now that does work well, but one, it doesn't have any view meters, and two, no remote. The remote is key here, so you can simply sit back in your listening position and change back and forth without interruption. I can also note that this one has been third-party tested to not impact the sound quality in any way. Subjectively, I can back those claims. I wasn't able to detect any audible issues using this. All channels are fully isolated and each channel ground is independent. So if you're worried about adding another component into the chain, this one appears to be really well made. Only thing you might wanna keep in mind is the max power. They state it as 300 watts max per channel. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Help me grow this great community. Also, let me know below the first product you bought that really pulled you into this hobby. It could be a vintage receiver from the 70s or as simple as a modern streamer. Curious how this one plays out. It's always interesting to hear how people get pulled into this wonderful, but sometimes frustrating hobby. The endless pursuit for some. Use case number two, you simply wanna add VU meters into your setup. I get it and I don't blame you. You can customize these to really any fit or look, and the meters certainly add a touch of analog to your listening. I could honestly care less if people wanna comment, but they don't increase your fidelity. Uh, get a grip. Likely a lot of things you buy don't, and if anything, they don't take away from the sound quality at all. Believe it or not, it's actually possible to have fun with this hobby too. Not everything has to be critical listening and complaining on the forums. Not that everyone does this and this community is great, but I'm sure you've all ran into this type before. Another thing to note on that, you can simply run this in passive mode, simply turn off the unit, all the meters, colors, that'll all be off, and everything is still gonna function as if it wasn't in the signal path. So really there isn't much risk here. We also get so many options to do this. We can wire these up, use the mic, control them with a remote, it's easy to recommend these based on their simple integration alone. On to use case number three, and actually my favorite one for people who combine their two channel and home theater spaces. Say you have one set of speakers in your front stage. It's connected to your home theater receiver. It works great for TVs and movies, but maybe a little lackluster in comparison to say, just for example, many of the dedicated integrated amplifiers on the market that focus on two channel performance. You can bring in a switch like this and have both amps connected to the ET30 here, 
and have it going out to a single set of speakers. Best of both worlds, use your home theater receiver just as normal. You don't even need the switch powered up. Uh, then when you want to listen to two channel, turn on the switch if it's off from the unit itself or the remote and simply jump over to your integrated amp with no penalties. It's a simple way to allow your equipment to do what it does best. Home theater receiver for movies and TV, integrated amp for music. There are a number of receivers out there today with home theater bypass, which can function in the same way, but honestly, it's far and few between. I would say it's a lot more common for people to have hybrid home theater and two channel spaces than it is to find a receiver with a bypass functionality. And with this one for right around $150, you can totally change how you use your space. I myself much prefer the sound coming from my integrated amp rather than the receiver. It's honestly a total game changer for a lot of people. This would obviously allow you to run two sets of speakers as well. So if you're really wild, you can easily have a completely separate home theater and two channel configuration. Basically my only caution is what I mentioned earlier. They state a max of 300 watts per channel, so just keep under that and you should be fine. I think the biggest limitation for most of the receivers today is the actual streaming platform. A number of them really lack on features and just general usability. If you wanna throw something together with a budget in mind, say maybe an integrated amp and a separate streamer is a bit out of your budget at the moment. Just have your home theater receiver stick to its duties, and then simply bring in something like a Wien Pro Plus. Good DAC, good streamer, great software and pair it up with one or two of either the new A07 Maxes or a Fozzie ZA3. Or even a great option coming in at $300 would be simply a Wiimamp, and that'll get you a sub out as well. If you're looking to take things a step further, the Audiolab 6000A that I use today is a great option under 1000, or the more budget-friendly Emotiva TA1 that comes in at I think around $600. Basically, that's it. A number of use cases for these. This one has great build quality, really nice large meters, Gimmick or not, some people pay a lot of money for digital view meters on products like the DMPA6, for example. This at least gets you into the same thing for $160. Add in all the other features and conveniences this offers for people who like to A-B test or just mix and match, and it's a great deal for the money. So what I really like on this one, it has good construction, actually surprisingly heavy little unit. The view meters are of high quality as well as the backlighting options that they offer. Gimmick, yes but that's fine. It should be pretty obvious a sound engineer isn't gonna use this for his profession, but at the same time, it's a great way to introduce a little more life into the hobby. I like that we get a remote, but more on that in a moment. I also like that this unit can run passive, no need to have it on unless I wanna see it in action or I need to switch components. So as far as what I think could be improved on this one, there isn't a lot here. It's a relatively simple device, so not a lot to go wrong. The primary risk was for it to impact the sound, but it doesn't do that. It's very much so transparent, so no worries there. My only real complaint might be the remote. I really appreciate them including one, and it's important for myself during A-B tests. But the buttons are a bit confusing on it. Once you get the hang of all the functions, it's fine, but you likely need to open up that manual to know what some of these do, unless you knew YE means it enables fixed light mode one just off the top of your head. Nonetheless, it's a minor issue. Just don't throw away that manual yet. And this also does include everything you need to get it up and running, but it does not include a wall wart, only a cable. So just keep that in mind as well. I think I have about 10 of those laying around and many of the power strips today include USB power. So generally not an issue, but just wanna make you aware. That's all I have. It's an easy recommendation based on the price and performance. I have it linked below if anyone wants to check it out. Also, please like and subscribe. It's amazing how much it helps a channel like this reach more people. I think I possibly have the most products on hand right now that I've ever had in, so I plan to really push out these reviews. Some really interesting ones in there as well. We have some new budget options that really haven't even hit the market yet, as well as some premium products like the new Bucard A10. And of course, I better get moving on a couple DIY series that could be really interesting depending on how wild I decide to get. Take care, and we'll chat soon. Later.